session provides an introduction to quantitative risk assessment, QRA, and gives an overview of the process. This short presentation will take you through the benefits and various uses of QRA. We will also discuss the stages of assessment that together make up a quantitative risk assessment. This presentation covers QRA as used in the oil and gas and chemical industries. Other industries also use quantitative risk analysis techniques, although a different terminology may be used. For example, the nuclear industry refers to probabilistic safety analysis, PSA. During this presentation, we are going to focus on the following four aspects. What is a QRA? What are the benefits of using QRA? What are the applications of QRA? What are the stages of a QRA process? The first thing to explore is what is a QRA? A QRA is a technique which is used to systematically estimate and analyse the risk from hazardous events. It involves predicting the size of consequences associated with the hazard and the frequency at which those consequences may be expected to occur. These two aspects are then combined in order to obtain numerical values for risk, usually the risk of fatality. Health, safety and environmental risk is defined as the chance, the probability, of a certain level of harm, a consequence, occurring. In other words, risk equals a probability of an event occurring multiplied by the event consequence. Let's break down and define the terms further. If we look at probability, probability can be defined as either the likelihood of an accident or incident occurring, a loss of control or a hazard being released. The event probability can range from certain through to impossible. Moving on to consequence, we can define consequence as the severity of the outcome of the incident following the release of a hazard. So this can be anything, from death through to no injury or harm to a person. There can also be environmental consequences. These can range from an environmental catastrophe through to no environmental impact or effect. There is risk present in all human activity. There is always a chance of a consequence occurring following the release of a hazard. This can be anything, from tripping up and breaking a bone whilst walking, or crashing and causing injury whilst driving. Sometimes it will be a small consequence or low frequency event and therefore low risk, and other times it may be high consequence or high frequency and therefore high risk. QRA does not include every single hazardous event which might occur. It just includes a representative set. But it does include all the significant hazards identified in the hazard study. Similar hazardous events are normally grouped and assessed together. An array of software packages exist for carrying out consequence modelling, frequency assessments or entire QRAs, but these calculations are often done using spreadsheets. So what are the benefits of using QRA? Quantitative risk assessment provides us with a numerical value of risk to personnel, which can then be compared with other numbers. For example, if you calculate the risk value for two different options, you can compare the results to see which option is the lowest risk solution. Or you can compare your calculated value against criteria that have been set by your company or the regulator to determine whether your risk is below intolerable or unacceptable levels. Having calculated a total risk value, you can also investigate it to determine what makes the biggest contribution to the total what is dominating your risk value, and therefore, where could you focus your risk reduction efforts to bring about the most significant risk reduction? However, be cautious of numerical estimates of risk. Just because a value is assigned doesn't mean it is necessarily accurate. It is always important to consider what the assumptions are and how sensitive the risk values are to changes in data, inputs and assumptions. The numbers are not absolute values, they are relative values. They are useful for comparing the difference between various options or to assess changes to the plant. We've touched here on some uses of QRA, 
What other applications are there? QRA can be used onshore or offshore under any stage of the facility's life cycle. The best point to reduce risk is during the design phase. When used offshore, QRAs assess the near-field risk to workers. This can be used for determining the risk of fatality and the risk of impairing escape, evacuation and rescue provisions, including impairment of a temporary refuge. Onshore QRAs can be used to assess both near-field risk to workers and also far-field risk to the public. The risk levels determined can be useful inputs for land use planning purposes by identifying the risk zones within which it may not be prudent to locate schools, hospitals or residential areas. Onshore QRAs can also be used to inform on-site occupied building risk assessments to help with locating buildings such as control rooms and offices in lower risk locations. The QRA process itself assesses both the probability and the consequences of the identified potential events separately before combining them to determine the risk. There are a number of stages involved in determining the probability and consequences of various events. The first stage of the QRA process is to identify the scenarios to model in the analysis. The hazards that are present are all identified and assessed individually to determine which scenarios are to be subject to modelling. A hazard identification study will usually have already been conducted, for example a hazard or a HAZOP. This will identify the site hazards and help to determine which scenarios are to be considered for the QRA analysis. Process flow diagrams, piping and instrument diagrams and heat and mass balance data are usually then consulted to determine the individual scenarios to be modelled in the QRA study and to determine the relevant process information required as input into the consequence modelling. The facility can then be modelled in sections, each with the applicable input values, for example temperatures and pressures. The plant is divided into sections, with the boundaries between sections usually being isolation or emergency shutdown valves or changes in fluid state, such as gas and liquid. Small, medium or large releases could occur from each section. The potential consequences from the identified release scenarios are determined and brought forward for modelling. The next stage of the analysis is to determine the frequencies of the identified releases. This will usually begin with a parts count of the equipment in the section. Each item of equipment has an estimated leak frequency based on historical data. These are summed to determine the release frequency for each of the identified sections. Event tree analysis is then usually used to determine the frequency of a specific event or outcome, such as a jet fire or explosion. These aspects of the QRA process make up the frequency assessment stage. The potential consequences of the identified scenarios are calculated through physical effects modelling, which predicts the size of the gas cloud, jet fire or explosion. The consequence modelling enables the consequences of a release to be quantified and determine the impact on people in terms of the probability of fatality. These aspects together form the consequence part of the QRA. Linking back to the earlier definition of risk, the frequency assessment is the probability part of the calculation and the consequence assessment is the consequence part of the calculation. The next stage combines these to determine the overall risk. The results of the frequency assessment and the consequence assessment are combined at the risk analysis stage. For example, we may have a section where the frequency of a jet fire is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 per year and the probability of fatality from that jet fire is 0.5, giving a risk from this scenario of 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6 per year. The risk from all the individual scenarios is summed to give the total risk. Total risk is presented in terms of standard risk measures. This analysis produces various outputs, for example, 
location-specific individual risk, individual risk per annum, potential loss of life, and FM curves. The results of the risk analysis are examined during the risk evaluation stage of the QRA. This determines the overall risk level resulting from the QRA to enable consideration of any further risk reduction measures required. The QRA results can be compared with the relevant risk criteria to determine whether the risk can be tolerated and to aid with consideration of additional risk reduction measures. The QRA results are often further investigated through sensitivity analysis or cost-benefit analysis. Sensitivity studies can include changes to parameters, for example temperature or pressure, to determine how significant the effects of these changes are. Cost-benefit analysis looks at the feasibility of additional risk controls to reduce the overall risk by assigning numerical risk reduction values to the risk reduction measures. The analysis at this stage can feed back into the start of the process to determine the achievable risk reduction. The flowchart on this slide gives you a brief overview of the QRA process. It outlines the various stages of analysis which together complete a quantitative risk assessment. This session has provided an overview of the QRA process.